Good morning. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about the second classification of morphemes. The first one divides morphemes into two types, free morphemes and bound morphemes. According to the second classification, morphemes can be divided into bases and affixes. In this lecture, we are going to deal with bases. The coming lecture is going to be about affixes. Starting with bases, what is a base? A base morpheme is a morpheme that carries the principal meaning of the word. It carries the main meaning of the word, the most important meaning. Words might consist of one, two, or more morphemes. Each one has meaning. But one of them has the principal meaning of the word, has the most important meaning of this word. And this is what is called the base of the word. So the morpheme that has the most important meaning of the word is called a base. Bases are of two types. We have free bases and we have bound bases. From their names, the words that have free morphemes, they have free bases. And the words that consist entirely of bound morphemes, they have bound bases. Let's take some examples of free bases. For example, the word enlighten. Enlighten consists of three morphemes, in, light, and en. Now, which one is a free morpheme and which one is a bound morpheme? Certainly, light is the free morpheme. Light has a meaning in isolation. It can be added along with meaning, so it is a free morpheme. The first en and the last en are bound morphemes because they are morphemes that cannot be added along with meaning. So we have bound, free, and bound morphemes. Now let's come to bases. Which morpheme is the base in this word? Is it the first en, light, or the last en? Certainly it is light. Because from light, we have the word enlighten. There is a direct relationship between the meaning of light and enlighten, which makes the meaning of light the most important meaning in the word enlighten. Neither the first en nor the last en carry the principal meaning of the word enlighten. Yes, they have meaning, but they carry secondary meaning. The most important meaning in the word enlighten is carried by the morpheme light, which is the base of this word. And because it is a free morpheme, it is a free base. The second example is darkness. Darkness is a word that consists of two morphemes, dark and ness. Dark is a free morpheme and ness is a bound morpheme because it cannot be uttered alone with meaning, but dark can be uttered alone with meaning. So it is a free morpheme. The base of this word is dark not ness, because dark carries the most important meaning of the word. Darkness comes from dark, not from ness. So the most important meaning of the word darkness comes from the morpheme dark, which makes it the base of this word. But what kind of bases? It is a free base, because dark is a free morpheme, it is a free base. 
writings. In writings, this word consists of three morphemes, write, ing, and s. Write is a free morpheme. ing is a bound morpheme. S is a bound morpheme. Write can be added alone with meaning, so it is a free morpheme. ing and s cannot be added alone with meaning. That is why they are bound morphemes. The base in this word is write. Writings comes from write. So the meaning of write is the principal meaning of the word of the word writings. That is why write is the base and it is a free base because it is a free morpheme. The last example is gracefully. Gracefully is a word that consists of three morphemes. Grace, full, and ly. Well, grace is a free morpheme because it is a word by itself. It can be added alone with meaning. Full and ly are bound morphemes because they cannot be added alone with meaning. The base of this word is grace because the word gracefully comes from grace. There is a direct meaning relationship between gracefully and grace, not with full or ly. And because grace is a free morpheme, it is a free base. So the free base and the word gracefully is the morpheme grace. Now we come to bound bases. We've said that free bases are bases that are free morphemes. So wherever we see a free morpheme in a word, this free morpheme is a base and it is called a free base. But in addition to free bases, we have bound bases. So in which condition we have bound bases. In fact, when a word consists entirely of bound morphemes, if a word does not have even one free morpheme, in this case, one of the bound morphemes is going to be the base because one of these morphemes has to carry the principal meaning of the word although it is a bound morpheme. Again, if a word consists of bound morphemes only, one of these bound morphemes is going to be the base and it is going to be called a bound base. But if a word consists of at least one free morpheme, the base is going to be this free morpheme and it is going to uh, be called a free base. Some words doesn't have a free morpheme. They consist of only bound morphemes. So one of these bound morphemes is going to be the base and it is called a bound base. Bound bases, in fact, are morphemes that come from other languages like Latin, Greek, French, etc. So they are borrowed from other languages to English. And they were free morphemes in those languages. But when they are borrowed into English, they became bound morphemes. They are not words in English. That is why they cannot be uttered alone with meaning. Still, they have meaning. When we attach some other morphemes to them. They have meaning. Let's take examples to illustrate this point. Take the word reject. Reject consists of two morphemes, re and ject. Well, let's have the first classification, free and bound morphemes. 
which one is a free morpheme and which one is a bound morpheme. Re is certainly a bound morpheme. It cannot be uttered alone with meaning. Ject is also a bound morpheme. It cannot be uttered alone with meaning. So both of them are bound morphemes. And because every word has to have a base, so one of these two bound morphemes is going to be the base. Which one carries the principal meaning of the word? Is it re or ject? Certainly it is ject. Ject means through. It comes from other languages. I'm not sure which language it, it, it comes from, but in its original language, it means through. So, re is a bound morpheme. Ject is also a bound morpheme, and it means through. And ject carries the principal meaning of the word. So, it is a bound base. Ject can be found in some other words like a like uh, inject, eject, uh, like project. So we have some other words with ject. And in all of these words, ject is a bound morpheme and it is a bound base. Another word is intervene. With intervene, we have two morphemes, inter and ven. Let's classify these two morphemes into free and bound morphemes. Inter. Inter is a bound morpheme. By the way, inter is not like inter with E. It is inter with I. Inter with E is a free morpheme. It is a word in English, but inter with I is a bound morpheme. It comes before bases. So, Inter is a bound morpheme. It doesn't have a meaning in isolation unless we attach this morpheme to other morphemes. Inter means between. Ven is a bound morpheme again because it cannot be uttered alone with meaning. So both inter and ven are bound mor morphemes. Ven comes from another language. It is borrowed into English and it means come, like come between, intervene, come between. So both of them are bound morphemes. Both of them cannot be uttered alone with meaning. Now we come to bases and affixes. But one of them should carry the principal meaning of the word. Is it inter or ven? It is ven. Ven carries the principal meaning of the word. It means come. But inter means between. So it doesn't carry the principal meaning of the word. We can find ven in a word like convene. Another word like convene. In both intervene and convene, ven is the morpheme that carries the principal meaning of the word. And at the same time, it is a bound morpheme. It cannot be uttered alone with meaning. So it is a bound base. Ven is a bound base. Inter is an FX. Let's take another example, aquatic. In aquatic, we have also two morphemes, aqua and IC. T here is put just for ease of pronunciation because we cannot say aquatic. That is why they put aquatic. So we have two morphemes, aqua and IC. Let's have the first classification, free and bound morphemes. Aqua, in fact, is a morpheme that cannot be uttered alone with meaning. IC is a morpheme that cannot be uttered alone with meaning. That is why both of them are bound morphemes. And because both of them are bound morphemes, the base here is a bound base. Now, which one is the base? Is it aqua or IC? 
Certainly it is aqua. Aqua means water. It might come from Latin. We have words like aquarium, like aquaplane, like aquanaut, etc. In all of these words, aqua means water. So, the main meaning, the principal meaning, is carried by the morpheme aqua, which makes it a bound base. And ik or ic is an affix. Comprehend. In comprehend, we have two morphemes, com and prehend. Neither com nor prehend are free morphemes. Com is a bound morpheme because it cannot be added alone with meaning. Prehend is a bound morpheme because it cannot be added alone with meaning. So both of them are bound morphemes. But one of them has to carry the principal meaning of the word. Come means with. Prehend means seize, like catch or seize. So which one carries the principal meaning of the word? It is prehend. Prehend carries the principal or the main meaning of the word, which makes it the base of the word. Although it is a bound morpheme, but it is the base because it carries the principal meaning of the word. We can find prehend in a word like apprehend. So we have comprehend, we have apprehend. Prehend here is the bound base of the word comprehend. Prehend means seize, but seize mentally, like understand. So, prehend is the base, the bound base of the word comprehend. Another word is polygamy. This word consists of two morphemes, poly and gammy. Poly is a morpheme that cannot be added alone with meaning. Gammy is also a morpheme that cannot be added alone with meaning. So, both of them are bound morphemes. We do not have a free morpheme in this word. Now we have to look at the base. Which one is the base in this word? Is it poly or gammy? Poly is an affix. It means several. Gammy comes from another language. It means marriage. So, the base or the morpheme that carries the principal meaning of this word is gammy, not poly. It is gammy. The meaning of polygamy indicates marrying to several women. So the main meaning is marrying, is marriage. And gammy means marriage. So gammy carries the principal meaning of the word polygamy, which makes it a bound base. It is the base, but it is a bound base because it is a morpheme that cannot be added alone with meaning. So gammy is the bound base of the word polygamy. We have another word with gammy like bigamy, marrying to two women. So we have polygamy, we have bigamy, and in both of them, gammy is the base and it is the bound base in these two words. Finally, there is a note about bases. Well, we've said that every word in English should have a base because there should be a morpheme in that word that carries the principal meaning of the word. If the word has a free morpheme, this free morpheme is going to be the base and it is a free base. And if the word consists of bound morphemes only, one of them is going to be the base and it is called a bound base. The note says that some words contain more than one base. So there are words that contain two bases, for example. And this happens when 
the principal meaning of the word is carried by the two morphemes, not by one. Let's have examples of words that have two bases, whether these two bases are bound bases or free bases. The first example is biology. Biology is a word that consists of two morphemes, bio and logi. Well, each one of these two morphemes is not a free morpheme. Each one is a bound morpheme. They both come from Latin, so they are borrowed morphemes. When the word consists entirely of bound morphemes like the word biology, the base, the type of the base is going to be a bound base. But do we have one base or two bases? Let's look at the meaning of the two morphemes. Bio means life. Logi means study. So it is life study. If we say that bio is the base because we are talking about life what about a study we are talking about the study of life not only life that is why both morphemes both bound morphemes carry the principal meaning of the word we are talking about the study of life so both of them carry the principal meaning of the word biology and they are bound bases because both of them are bound morphemes. Another example is bibliophile. This word consists entirely of bound morphemes. Biblio plus file. They are borrowed morphemes from other languages. Biblio means book. File means lover. So it is a book lover. Now, which one of these two morphemes carries the principal meaning of the word? Is, is it book or lover? Well, in fact, both of them, we are talking about the one who loves the book. That is why both morphemes carry the principal meaning of the word. So these two morphemes are bound bases because both of them are bound morphemes and both of them carry the principal meaning of the word bibliophile. A word like geography. Geography consists of two morphemes, geo plus graphy. Geo means earth. Graphy means writing. These two morphemes are not free morphemes. Both of them are bound morphemes. But which one of them carries the principal meaning of the word to call it a base? So which one? Is it earth or writing? Well, we are talking about earth writing. We are not talking about earth only. We are talking about earth writing. So both of them carry the principal meaning of the word. That is why both of them are bound bases because they are bound morphemes. Let's have another word, notebook. Note, book. This word consists of two morphemes, note plus book. But notice that both of them are free morphemes. Note is a free morpheme. It can be added alone with meaning. And book is a free morpheme in English and it can be added alone with meaning. A notebook is not any book. It is a book in which we write notes. So both note and book carry the principal meaning of the word notebook. That makes them the bases of the word notebook, both of them are bases because both of them carry the principal meaning of the word notebook. Because they are free morphemes, the 
bases in this word are called free bases. Fireman. Fireman is a word that consists of two morphemes, fire and man. Each one of them is a free morpheme in English. Fire is a free morpheme. Man is a free morpheme in English. Now, which one of them carries the principal meaning of the word? Is it fire or man? In fact, both of them. We are not talking about a man only or, or fire only. We are talking about fire man. So, both of them carry the principal meaning of the word fireman which makes them the basis of the word fireman and because both of them are free morphemes these two bases are free bases